In the last two years, we've analysed over 60 hours of our subscribers playing badminton at a variety of levels. And in those videos, we kept seeing six mistakes that players were making at the net. So in this video, we're going to share these six mistakes, and more importantly, what you should do instead. The first common mistake is only hitting straight shots when you're taking the shuttle at the net height or lower. This is something we see players do at every level, and I still find myself doing it too. But why is this such a big mistake? Well, there are two main reasons. Firstly, it makes your shots from this position really predictable. This means that your opponent can prepare their body and racket position before you've even hit the shuttle. And secondly, it doesn't make your opponent twist and turn at all. Humans are fastest when moving in straight lines, hence why the 100 meter race is done on a straight line and not round the bend. But what we're not saying to do is now start playing everything cross court. This is often too risky. So what should you do instead, Jenny? Well, we're going to recommend a really underrated and underused shot, a half turn to the middle. From a position like this, where your opponent is anticipating a straight net shot, you can use this half turn to make them change direction. This might not be a winning shot, but it will certainly make it harder for them and often means they can't put you under as much pressure. Okay, let's move on to our second mistake, standing too close to the net. But this isn't as simple as you might think. Yeah, we have four reasons why you need to avoid doing this. Firstly, if your opponents hit it hard, it's much more difficult to react, meaning you're more likely to mistime the shuttle and make a mistake or just miss it completely. As you can see here, I'm stood on the service line and can only get around 50% of Greg's shots back. Our second reason is that it's harder to see what's happening. Whatever device you're watching this video on, bring it right up to your face. Firstly, hello, this is probably a bit too close for comfort, but it's also harder for you to see what's on the screen. This is a similar concept to on the court. If you're stood too close, then it's harder to see what's happening. The third reason is a big one. And this is that being too close means you can only cover the soft shots in front of the service line. Your partner then has to cover everything else on the court, making it a lot harder for them. And even if you think your partner is way better than you and basically wants to play singles, it's still not the right thing to do. This links nicely onto our fourth reason, which is that standing too close shows a lot of space on the court to your opponents and makes the game feel really easy for them. Okay, hopefully you now understand why standing too close to the net is bad. But what should you do instead? Well, firstly, you can stand a little bit further back because, as you can see, Greg is feeding me exactly the same as before, but I can now get 95% of his shots back with almost no mistakes. It's now much easier to react. I can see what's happening on the court. I'm not just covering the soft shots and I'm making it look like there's less space to hit into. And an added benefit is that it's much harder for Greg to twist and turn me when I'm further back because I'm now moving forwards into the shot rather than sideways like I was before. But as we said earlier, it's not as simple as this and exactly how far back you should be depends on a few things. If you or your partner plays a soft shot and your opponent is taking the shuttle below the height of the net, then you can move your position forwards to around the service line. This is because the likely shot is either a soft net shot or a high lift. But if you or your partner plays behind the service line, then we'd recommend standing further back this is because it's more likely for your opponents to play harder, flatter shots, and you're therefore in a better position to intercept these and potentially help your partner out. As you can see from this diagram, your partner now has much less to cover than if you just stayed on the service line in all scenarios. And we'll be talking more about which side of the court to move to in mistake six, so stay tuned for that. So moving on to the third common mistake, trying to play a winning shot too early. This is potentially the biggest reason players make mistakes at the net. Often you see the shuttle in the air and your eyes light up. You see the glory, but the reality is you don't always get there early enough to play that winning shot. Because you think you're gonna get there early enough to go for the kill, you have a big swing. And by the time you've done this, you're actually not taking the shuttle where you thought you would be. And you end up hitting the shuttle into the net or out the back of the court. I'm sure many of you can relate. There will also be times where you fully commit to a winning shot like a net kill, hit it over and in, but it goes straight to your opponent's racket, or even worse, upwards. So you and us need to get better at recognising when the opportunity is there to go for a winning shot, and when it's not. This is what the better players do really well. They play a shot that still applies pressure, but enables them to stay on balance, 
and because they're on balance, they can place this shot really well, setting either themselves or their partner up to win the rally on the next shot. This is something you can definitely do too, but your shot placement is really important. It does take practice, and one practice you can do is where a feeder plays a shot to you about half a meter above the net. You come in and play this pressure shot back at them. They then try and get it back, and then finally you go for the winning kill. So that's the key. You don't always have to fully commit to a big winner. Sometimes a shot with a little bit less power or a little bit of a shorter swing can be much more effective as it prevents the risk of making a mistake. And a lot of the time, you'll win the point on the next shot anyway. Now, next on our list of net mistakes is waiting with your racket down by your ankles. Believe us, there are many culprits of this around the world. We've even seen people checking their watch at the same time. There are a few reasons as to why having your racket down is bad. It again slows down the time for you to react to shots, meaning you'll either take them later or even not at all. It also makes you look less threatening to your opponents. You'll be surprised how many points you might win solely because you look like you're ready for their shot. So what we would recommend instead is that as soon as you see your opponent is about to hit their shot, you start getting your elbow up so you're roughly in this position. But as we've said in a previous video, you don't want to have your racket up too high. Doing this can make your arm really stiff and tense, which reduces your power. And if your opponents hit a shot at net height or below, you then have to bring your arm a long way down, which wastes time and also reduces your control. The only times where you can get away with having your racket low is if you have lightning fast reactions along with great racket speed and the ability to read the game really well. But unfortunately, most of the people in those 60 hours of matches we watched haven't been blessed with those skills. They haven't put in the thousands of hours the pros have or they haven't watched enough of our videos. We're not sure which. The next mistake we've seen a lot of players make is not changing between the grips quickly enough. This skill can be the difference between taking the shot early and timing it well, or completely mistiming it. But the good news is that it can easily be improved. The main mistake we see people make is not switching to a backhand grip when they need to. Let's show you a quick example. So here, Jenny is playing net shots on the backhand side, but in a forehand grip. And for her, the quality is bad. But when she switches to the correct backhand grip, you can see that the quality drastically improves. Now for kills and interceptions, you actually want to be taking most of these in a forehand grip, as it's generally easier to create power and control, but just not when it's really far over to your backhand side. So how do you improve this skill of changing between grips quickly? Well, you change your grip with your fingers and thumb. So if you're playing with your fingers and thumb tightly wrapped around your handle, it's going to be really difficult to change grips mid-rally so you need to be relaxed and loose. Look how easy it is to turn the racket with a loose grip compared to a tense grip. You can practice simple grip changes anywhere and it will really help your handling of the racket in a match. We've actually shown seven levels of practice you can do to improve your grip changes on a previous video. So we'll link that at the end of this video for you. Doing these will help you change between your grips both quickly and instinctively in a match, which is really important. Now onto mistake six staying in the middle of the court. This makes it both frustrating for you because it's difficult to reach a lot of shots and also frustrating for your partner because they have to cover both sides, meaning it's also much harder for them. So what should you be doing instead? Well, the answer to this, like a lot of situations in badminton is, it depends. Let's go through two simple scenarios that often happen in a match. Scenario one is when your opponents have lifted and your partner is in position at the back and hits a good straight smash. The likely shot from your opponents is a straight block, but if you stay stood in the middle, then either you or your partner will have to take the shuttle late. Whereas if you moved over slightly in what we call a channel attack, you will be able to intercept this shot and hopefully win the point. Or as we said in mistake three, play a shot to set yourself up to then finish it on the next shot. But this situation will be very different if your partner was under pressure in the rear court, and this we're calling scenario two. Yeah, so instead of standing slightly on the same side as your partner, you'd now stand slightly to the other side. This is because your partner is probably going to play a slightly worse shot, and therefore your opponents are likely to be more able to step into the shot, and the gap they'll see is cross-court to the opposite side of your partner. 
We're getting quite technical now, but because of this slight difference in contact point, your partner would have a lot less time to move to this cross-court shot. And therefore, it's your job to move out and try to intercept it. And this is why you want to already be a little bit towards this side. Those are just two scenarios. And again, the advice changes depending on where the previous shot has been played from and also what shot has been played. A lot of this decision-making of where to move to comes down to your ability to read the game. And one way you can improve your ability to read the game is watching top-level badminton matches to see what they're doing. Unfortunately, many top-level badminton matches aren't available to watch live in a lot of countries. But luckily for you, we have a solution. The sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Using Surfshark VPN, we've been able to change our virtual location to watch games that are geo-blocked, such as this one, where we could watch and learn how Alfian doesn't go for a winning shot too early. And changing our virtual location has also enabled us to access all of these different content libraries on Netflix, which has given us more reason to sit down, relax, and practice those grip changes. And for those wondering, yes, using a VPN is legal. Aside from changing your virtual location with Surfshark, it's also great for staying safe on public Wi-Fis by encrypting your online data. This helps prevent any attacks, just like not staying in the middle of the court helps prevent attacks from your opponents. With one subscription, you can have it on unlimited devices. And if you somehow don't enjoy using Surfshark VPN, they even offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what have you got to lose? To try it for yourself, head to the link in the description below to get three extra months for free. And thank you in advance for your support. And thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. And if after watching this video, you've realized that you need to improve changing between grips, then we'll link that video here for you. And lastly, don't forget to smash the subscribe button if you haven't already, give the video a like, and we'll see you on another video very soon.